Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question container with the most water. So in this question, we're going to be given an integer array height of length n. There are n vertical lines drawn uh, such that the two endpoints of the ith line are i comma zero and i comma height i. Okay, so find the two lines that together with x-axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. Return the maximum amount of water that we can store. Cool, so in very simple words, we have a height, right? A set of heights, and this has a height of 1, then 8, and 6, and so on and so forth. And they are placed apart with a distance of 1. So the distance between this and this is going to be 1, okay? And we want to find out, let's say we choose two of these vertical bars, what is going to be the area that this encompasses, okay? So how much area can we cover? So uh, just to better explain this, I have this figure over here. And uh, realistically, let's say we have this and this, and we want to make a box with them, right? So in this case, the tallest our box can be is a height of 1, because even if even this one could be as tall as possible, but it doesn't matter because this block, since it's shorter in height, is going to constrain us, right? And if the box is bigger, the water is just going to flow out, right? So the box that we really end up having is going to look something like this. And the x distance is going to be 1, 2, 3, right? So we have an x distance of 3, y distance of 1, so 3 into 1, and that is going to be our area. Right. So like that, we want to find out what is going to give us like the best combination of two vertical lines to get the most water. OK, so the brute force solution obviously is going to have two for loops. And inside of it, we're going to have a result where each time we're going to take the maximum of the result and the newly calculated value, whatever that is. Now, obviously, this is going to be our brute force solution, but this is going to have a time complexity of big O of n squared. So what I want to do in this video is actually I want to show you how can we actually come up with a better solution. And instead of just giving you the solution, I want to show you how I actually thought about the solution and how I really reached the conclusion of it. OK, so the first thing that I want to look at is this diagram. I think it's a pretty good example to work with. So we have this uh, height of one over here. OK, now the first thing that I would like to consider is this two, what is the goal here? We want to maximize the area, okay? So maximizing the area is the same thing as maximizing the x distance and maximizing the y distance. And the y distance is nothing else but the height, okay? These are the two things we want to maximize, okay? So keeping this in mind, I want you to think about this. Let's say one is the height of this, right? Which it is, and the farthest value from it, right? So the last vertical line has a height of, in this case, seven, right? Now, this is actually going to be the best case scenario, right? So in this case, what this really means is that our largest box is going to be of a height one, right? For, for this specific um, line over here, right? So it's going to be of height one all the way to the ending and down, okay? So what is the horizontal distance in this case? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have a horizontal distance of eight, and the vertical distance is gonna be one. So this is nothing else but an area of one. Now, what exactly am I trying to prove over here? So the point I'm trying to prove is that the last value over here is greater than or equal to the current height that we're looking at. Now, what that really tells us is that the current height is not a constraint in this case, right? So just for the sake of it, let's say this had a height of two and this had a height of one. So what this actually means is that there is a constraint, right? We could actually, so with just respect to this, we could have a height of two, but we are being constrained by a smaller height. So realistically, we are keeping track of the maximizing the x distance and the height. And the way we're doing that is just to give an other example. Let's say this is a height of 2 and the last value is greater than or equal to 2. Then in that case, that means we have found the maximum area this height can give us. OK, because we've maximized the x distance. And we have also, we don't have any constraint with respect to height. But now let's say that the last value over here is actually a height of one. Now this is a constraint. So what this means is that 
there could possibly be a larger area on the left of it. So now let's say we go to the left of it and this also has a height of one. Well, this is also constraining it. So we're gonna to go to the left again. So now let's say this has a height of two. Now there is no constraint and we have been able to maximize the X distance, right? So uh, we're gonna look at what gives us the best result from the right to left because we want to maximize X in such a way that we're gonna keep doing this as long as the height is less than the current height we're looking at. Now at any point, if it's greater than or equal to the height we're looking at, we're gonna stop the search because that is going to be the best value we're gonna get. It's not gonna get better than that because just to actually further elaborate, let's say after this we have something which has a massive height, right? That doesn't matter because still we're constrained by the height of two and now what happened is the X distance is smaller. So the best solution we got would have been on the right hand side, okay? So this is gonna be the basic idea and I'm gonna kind of show you how I took this idea and formulated or got a big O N solution out of it, okay? So what I'm gonna do real quickly is I'll just show you two examples and then I'll just fill out this table kind of, okay? So we're gonna look at each of the indices. So let's say we're at index zero, okay? And we wanna find out what is the best value for this, okay? So we're gonna go from right to left, okay? So from index zero all the way to the ending, right? Now, what we're gonna check is we're gonna check is there a constraint of height? Well, it's not. So in this case, we have a uh, X distance of eight and the height is one. So the best value we're gonna get is going to be eight with respect to including the zeroth index, okay? And again, the reasoning is same. Let's say even on the left of it, there is a value greater than or equal to two, but we've already maximized the X value. We don't have to check for anything else since we had no height constraint, okay? So now we go into index one. So this has a height of eight. So now we go to the last value. So the last value over here is gonna be, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So instead of you know counting it, we can just look at the index values and subtract it. So eight minus one is seven. So a X value of seven. And the height over here is constrained. We're constrained by the seven, okay? So this is gonna be one option, okay? Now we, so since we're constrained, we're gonna keep looking at more options. So over here, we have a height of three. So this is gonna be X distance of six and a height of three, okay? Now we have over here. So now over here, we have no constraint since the height is the same. So in this case, we're gonna have a X distance of five and a height of eight. Okay, so I'll just simplify all of this. So this is 49, uh, this is 18, and this is 40, okay? And out of all of these, the best value is 49, okay? So this maximized the X value, and we got the best height. Now, there's no actual way we can just know which one is better, but we do have to try them out, okay? So I'll just do the same thing for the rest of the indices, and I'll just show you what the end result looks like. Okay, so this over here is gonna be the entire table filled out. So you can have, so you can see the values for each indices. Obviously eight is not gonna have an index because, well, sorry, a value because that's the last index, okay? And we need a pair, cool. So in this case, as you can see, for each of this index, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to do exactly what we said, maximize the X value while also ensuring that we're not having any constraint of height, okay? So now for index zero, the best value we're gonna get is eight. For index one, that's 49 and so on and so forth. So essentially, now that we have these values, we can just take the maximum of this and that's gonna be our answer. So in this case, 49 is the maximum. So that's our final answer, which is correct. Now, this solution does work. So let's actually look at the time complexity of this. So this solution is actually really close to a better solution, but I wanna first just discuss this, right? So the time complexity of this is, let's think about it. In the best case, right, we have something in ascending order. So each and every time, we just have to do one operation, right? So one operation n times, that's nothing else but big O of n, right? So this is the best case solution. Now the worst case is we would have to do n squared, so n operations n times. So that would be in descending order, right? So uh, technically that would be n minus one operation each time. So, but more specifically, so just to generalize it, that is as good as n squared in the worst case, okay? And in this case, the average case is also going to give us n squared, right? So that um, we could just assume the average case to be something like n by two into n plus one. Um, so that would also, uh, that would actually be n plus one plus one, 
n plus 1 and that would also give us something like n squared right so the average squared uh, average time is also n squared so this is not anything significantly better okay uh, but we can actually with this solution over here we can get really close to a final solution now remember what the point over here is each time we're looking for how far away we can how can we extend the x distance while preserving the height right that is the entire thing so we can actually do the same thing by having two pointers okay so we're gonna have a pointer over here called l and r okay and it's gonna have a similar function to what this table over here really had okay so in the beginning we're gonna look at l and r and we're gonna calculate the distance from here right so i'll keep track of a result so in the beginning it's gonna be none right so now we're gonna keep track of this right so over here what is this so this has a distance of eight minus zero eight into one so now our result is eight so now what do we do with these pointers over here now what over here was the constraining factor well the constraining factor in terms of height was the one over here right because obviously seven is larger and it's being constrained by one right because the maximum height you can have is one so we're not going to consider this and now we're going to consider the next best value now the reason and having left and right at the extreme ends also ensures that we get the farthest away distance okay so now we're going to move our left pointer to the right by once okay so that's because so now we have a value of eight and we do the same thing so we do eight uh the length over here is going to be eight minus one seven so seven into seven which is 49 so 49 is greater than eight so we replace our result with that now in this case we do the same thing what is being constrained well the eight is being constrained over here right so uh for all we know there's a higher number somewhere on the left right so we have to move the seven so now the right pointer gets moved to the left right so now we have these two values and we do the same thing over again and now in this case what is being constrained well again the eight is being constrained so we move this to the left okay uh so over here now we have this value so there is no constraint uh, in terms of height but the distance became smaller so we have six minus one which is five and five into eight is 40 but 49 is greater so we keep that as it is so when in this case now they're both the same we could actually move either of them it's not going to actually affect it uh, so let's say we move this over here okay so now we have four uh, uh whatever value we get so i'm already okay. i've already gone through this but just real quickly so over here this value is going to be smaller than the result in this case so then uh, now we have four and eight the right pointer comes over here then after that it's going to move here and then again and finally it comes over here now when it's at the same place when l is equal to r or in other words just generalize when when r is less than or equal to l then in that case that means we are done with the solution right so left always has to be on the left of r right so we've looked at all the pairs and we've reached our final solution so essentially my point is by doing this we're able to maximize the uh, x distance that we're getting and we each time we're removing the constraint of height one by one okay so this solution over here is actually going to be big o of n in time complexity and space complexity is going to be constant space okay let's see how this uh, solution looks like in code okay so we're going to initialize the left and right pointer uh, and the result as infinity in the beginning so while the left value is less than r right each time we're going to update the result right so first we get the maximum between the previous result and the new result so this is going to be the x length and this is going to be the y length okay the minimum between the left and right so then we need to see which one is the constraining height so if it is so if the left value is the constraining height we're going to move to the right and else we're going to move the right pointer to the left and we're going to keep doing this until the condition is true after which we return the result so this should be it uh, thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know if you have any questions.